How's it going guys? In this video, I'm gonna be speaking about the topic of parasitic draw, also known as parasitic drain. And I'm gonna be going over a few different ways that I've used over the years to find and fix them particular faults. And what exactly is parasitic draw? Parasitic draw is an unwanted load or current that's pulling on your vehicle's electrical system. This will ultimately lead to a flat battery and a no start fault occurring. The very first thing you need to do, and this will be a time saver, is pull all the relevant information that you can on the vehicle you're about to work on. What that means is you will want the fuse layout, you're gonna want the fuse locations, uh, potentially wiring diagrams depending on the fault that has occurred on your vehicle, and you're also gonna to wanna to have an understanding on older versus more modern electrical systems. Has the newer vehicle that you're working on got a proximity entry system? Has it got a multitude of onboard electronics? If it has, the backup current can be substantially more than what an older vehicle would have. To give you an example, a new modern vehicle can have a backup current of between 80 and 100 milliamp compared to older, less complex systems that only have a backup current of about 20 to 30 milliamp of current. Once we know that information, when we're carrying out the actual test, we will be able to see results accurately and know that the backup current is normal in one test and not excessive. And what I mean by that is if you were doing a backup current on an older vehicle and you've seen a 100 milliamp, you would know that there's a parasitic draw. Whereas if you were doing it on a, on a newer vehicle and you got a 100 milliamp, you would know that that is the backup current that you would expect to see on that vehicle. Another thing of note is when you are starting to do the test that if it has a proximity entry system on the vehicle that you remove the key fob from the vehicle altogether. There is some instances of key fobs when they're left too close to that entry system that the module never shuts down and that can cause an excessive drain and it will give you false results when you're commencing the test. The first way of doing this test is through the use of a scan tool. Now this is only suitable if your vehicle has a battery management system and it supports the diagnostic function of that. If it does, then you potentially have a very efficient and effective way to find a parasitic draw on a vehicle. So once you have all the simple checks done, we can now start to do our parasitic draw test. The items that we need access to, like the fuse boxes in the engine compartment or the fuse boxes inside of the vehicle will determine what we leave open. What I mean by that is you're gonna to wanna to keep doors open, potentially on both sides, and you're gonna to want to keep the bonnet open as well. So depending on the layout of your particular vehicle, you may have to trip the latches and trick the vehicle into going into sleep mode. So we want to push down on the bonnet lock while the bonnet is open. If it has a push button type sensor, we need to keep them sensors pressed in the down position. They go into the up position and they detect that they're open. So if it's in the door lock, we trip the lock on that if it's actually a sensor that's on the pillar or under the bonnet, we keep them pushed down. Once we have that done, we lock the vehicle and we leave it for a duration of time. Depending on your vehicle, it can be as little as 30 minutes we have to leave it for, it could be an hour and a half. So what I suggest to cover all bases is leave it for 90 minutes and come back and then you can start to do your actual test. The next test I'm going to do is a amp meter series connection test and this is a very effective way of finding a fault on older vehicles. I wouldn't recommend doing this test on newer vehicles. So for an amp meter series connection test you're going to have to use the alligator clamp leads on your multimeter. 
you set them to the highest amp setting, be it 10 or 20 amps DC, and you put your red lead in the amp port of the multimeter. Clamp one lead onto the negative battery pole and the other onto the negative terminal lead. The meter will then complete the vehicle ground circuit. Any current flow from the battery must travel through our multimeter and we will have a visible display of how much current is being pulled. You can also use a current clamp if you had that tool and you are familiar with using it. The next stage is as easy as fuse removal. We remove one fuse at a time and we watch the multimeter for any change. If a drop occurs, you have identified a circuit with the problem. If the fuse has shared systems on the circuit, a wire diagram is recommended to investigate further. Once you are aware of the shared items, reconnect the fuse and disconnect the components one by one until the meter drops back within spec you have then identified the fault. This is a great method, but it has its short faults. On newer vehicles, pulling fuses can result in the removal of power from a module. It can then reset it and potentially hide the fault when you are doing the test. Removal of fuses can also wake up the system, resulting in an extended wait time for everything to go back to sleep again. So that means you might have to start the whole process all over again and you may not have actually found the problem when you're doing the test. And lastly, the best way to do this test is called a voltage drop test. Now, this requires no removal of the fuses and is as simple as getting your multimeter and holding across each fuse as you go down for a number of seconds and looking at the multimeter for a reading. A normal functional fuse will have a resistance which causes voltage drop. A open or blown fuse will show a 12 volt reading across the multimeter. If we come across a fuse with a problem, the resulting multimeter will show it. There is conversion charts that we can use to see exactly how much draw that we have. I will link them in the description. If you have a J case fuse, you will need to remove the top plastic piece before carrying out this particular test. Lastly, if all the fuses test okay, we would need to test circuits protected by fusible links or in harness slow burn fuses. And that is it guys, I hope you found this video enjoyable, I hope you found it informative. If you did, please like, share, comment and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.